Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to look at setting up an interactive cloth simulation. I'll show you all the steps that you need to do to make it work. And then at the end of the video, I'll tell you about a script I've been putting together for my Patreon subscribers that automates the whole process. So let's jump right into it. We're going to start with this scene that I put together using some of the asset packs that I have available on my Gumroad, plus some of the textures from the Polyhaven asset library. Links to both are in the description. The next thing that I wanted was to add a blanket to the top of this bed. Let me show you one method that I've seen used quite a few times. Now I've separated out the mattress, the bed stand, and the floor from everything else in the scene. Next, I'd add a collision modifier to these three objects. Now, I'd want to go ahead and add my object that I'm going to use as my blanket. I'll use a simple plane and size it appropriately. That looks fairly decent. Now, since we're going to want this to drape on the bed, we need to give the blanket some subdivisions. How many times you subdivide the blanket is going to be up to you and up to the computing power that you might have available. For me, I'll subdivide it an initial 10 times, select that, and subdivide that another three times. Now that I have a mesh available for my blanket, I'd add a cloth modifier to this blanket. Now that those things are added, you simply want to play your scene. This gives a pretty decent result. Of course, we can always make some adjustments. So going back to frame one, I can go to the settings of my cloth modifier. One thing I could do is add self collisions. If I scroll down under the collisions section, I can turn it on from here. Let's see what the default settings give us. Although it doesn't look like much changed, we do get a little better results here in these corners. If I was happy with this result, I could simply go to my modifier stack and apply my cloth modifier. Now my mesh is in this shape and I could do something like add a subsurf modifier to it and shade it smooth. If I go back to my scene, that looks all right. Of course, I didn't want to be satisfied with just all right. So let's take this up another level. I'll hide this blanket and we'll start again. I already have the collisions set up on these three objects, so I don't need to do that again. Again, we're going to add our blanket object. Give it its subdivisions. I'm going to move it back here again. I want to use the cloth modifier but I want to do it in an interactive way. So my thought was, what if I used an empty, like it was a hand holding onto the cloth? How could we accomplish this? First, I would need to know where on the cloth the hand was going to be holding. In this case, maybe one hand is holding here and one hand is holding here. To identify these, I'll add a vertex group to my blanket and assign these two areas a value of one. Now, if I were to add my cloth modifier, go to my settings and add a pinning group and run my simulation, we get this, which actually seems to be a move in the right direction. Now, how could we get these points over here in a nice interactive way? So the next step would be to add a hook that could drive these two groups. So from edit mode, with these selected, I'm going to go to my search menu and type in the word hook. And then from here, I'm going to choose hook to new object. This will add an empty at the center point of all my selected vertices. Now, the only other thing we want to do is to tell that hook to use the vertex group that we had specified. So now let's run this and see what we get. That looks good so far, but when we move our empty, we get this, which isn't what we're looking for. However, there is a reason this is happening. If we go back to our blanket object, we see that the hook modifier is affecting the object after the cloth modifier. We actually want it to be before, so let's go ahead and move this up one. So now the cloth modifier will happen after the hook. Let's try this again. 
that looks good. Now if I move my empty, I'm actually dragging my blanket with it. Now you may notice if you play, the last thing you did is still being played. That's because that cloth simulation has been cached. One quick way to clear out your cache is to change the end frame by one and then change it back. This will invalidate your cache immediately. Also make sure you go back to frame one and now you see we have zero frames in memory and we can try again. So from here, you can play around till you get something you like. Now let's get a little bit more control before we finish up. First, I'm gonna start by rotating my blanket down a little bit. Then I'll take my empty and then insert some keyframes. We'll do location and rotation. I'm going to move over to my animation tab and I'll push forward a few frames. Another thing I can do is use the rotation of my empty for effect. Now do be careful about making too sudden of movements as this will drastically affect your cloth simulation like you can see here. So in this case, I might want to move this keyframe over just a little bit to slow that action down. Now certainly, all of your other cloth simulation options are still available to you. So if you wanted to go and add more friction to the bed, you could certainly do that. Now, of course, once you have a result that you're happy with, you can simply apply your hook and cloth modifiers. I'll hide my empty for now. And as you can see, I've got a blanket here. Now I might like having these wrinkles across the top of the bed, but you'll notice that the side here still needs to be affected by gravity. So what I'm gonna do is go back onto the bed, go to my collision settings and ramp up the friction quite a bit. That means that this part of the blanket shouldn't slide or shouldn't slide very much. So now if I go back to my blanket, add a cloth modifier and play, those sides should droop down nicely. Then I can simply go back and apply that cloth modifier. From here, I would generally add a subdivision surface modifier and a solidify modifier. If you have any areas that need a little bit of tweaking, you can of course go into sculpt mode. And using your tools here, could smooth out any areas maybe that have some self intersections or that need cleaning up. Of course, what you add for a texture or how you light the scene will drastically affect how this turns out in the end. You may not like the result that I got here, but I bet you can come up with something even better. Now, of course, this is just a quick result to show you the overall technique that I was going through. For a final render, you definitely want to spend a lot of time tweaking that animation until that cloth simulation gets to exactly where you're looking for. Now, this setup can be a little tricky to get going in the first place. So I've put together a little script. And with that script, you'll be able to add an object, select some vertices, Choose cloth drag. And your hook is ready to go. It also works with selecting multiple points. This script makes working interactively with cloth simulations a whole lot faster. And when you're done, you'll see that it's created modifiers that are named appropriately, so you'll know what they were, and you can simply apply them. This script basically does all of the steps that we did in this tutorial, but in an easy fashion. Like I said at the beginning of this tutorial, this script is gonna be available only in the source files for my Patreon subscribers. 
Of course, the technique itself is yours to use, and I hope you make something awesome with it. But for my supporters, I hope this script makes accessing this a whole lot simpler. So speaking of my Patreon subscribers, I want to give them a shout out for believing in me enough to support this channel. Anyhow, I hope this video inspires you to make something awesome, and I hope you find some creative ways to use this technique. So until next time, I'll catch you later.